and welcome to the CTS Train Ride podcast. Today's guest is a special one, of course. I say that for everyone. But we're going to talk to Patty O'Leary. And Patty O'Leary is a good friend of mine. He's on the North Face team. Um, a little bit about Patty. He's an Irishman based out of San Francisco, California, where he works as a cancer researcher. Over the past five years, he has converted from a lacrosse player to a mountain and ultra runner. Patty now spends his weekends running at mountains and races with the North Face, Goo Energy Labs, and the Iron National Team. So in today's conversation, we're going to talk to Patty about how he got it started in running. And I think it's really important uh, for us to, to learn about the different backgrounds that people have and how an elite runner can, it doesn't just happen, but at least for people like Patty, he kind of discovered it later in life. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. We'll learn a lot about Patty, uh, his wonderful Irish accent. I think it's, you know, super soothing. So I hope you enjoy. Um, and we'll talk to him about how he balances his full-time job as a cancer researcher uh, running um, and just some other fun stories about what he's been up to the past couple of years. So I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the CTS Train Right podcast. Today I'm talking with my good friend Patty O'Leary. Welcome Patty. How's it going? I'm excited to have the little chat this morning. Yeah, I know with the time change, I'm here in France, you're in San Francisco. It's like breakfast with my, I don't know, happy hour? Yeah. <laughs> I feel you're like I should have wine. I'm, I'm here enjoying my, Hillary gave me the time to finish my muesli before uh, before <laughs> we started this podcast, so I don't have to speak with my mouth full, but I still do have a couple of slices of toast on my left, so I may dig into <laughs> them throughout it, and a good Irish cup of tea, Irish oh, breakfast tea. Oh, yeah. that's good. All right. I love it. It's cool. I mean, we can, it's like, we're going to bring you into the room when we're talking with you, Patty. So feel free yeah. to keep on eating your toast. I know it's like early over there. <laughs> I've actually got this cookie butter on it from Trader Joe's. That Ooh. is, as the Americans say, it's bomb. I think that is the term. <laughs> In Ireland, we say it's class, but it, it's hey. a class cookie butter. Well, Patty. Okay. So we're teammates on the North Face. Yeah. I've had the pleasure of sharing so many adventures with you stateside in San Francisco, but most recently in Chile, we can get into that later, but um, you taught me something in Chile, it's called, what's the crack? <laughs> what? The Irish say something about what's the crack and it's supposed to have so many meanings. I don't know, maybe inform me, I forget. It's weird, we're all, we always go up and ask people around, like whenever you see your friends are asking, oh, what's the crack or where's the crack? And yeah, people in America are very confused, they're like, why are you all into hard drugs? Um, <laughs> So I'm thinking, Ireland, like crack, like where's the crack? Like my butt crack? Like what? Oh, oh. Like, so why I jump to one and jump to another? That's kind of odd. Um, so yeah, so crack in Ireland basically it spells C R A I C. It means fun and banter, and um, so it's a way we. It's something that we kind of revolves our, our life around because Ireland, the Irish are the most fun people in the world, and um, so our life revolves around banter. Um, so there's different levels of crack. So you can have good crack. It's like, ah, that's okay. Then there's great crack. And then there's savage crack. Then there's, I'd say, I think brilliant crack is kind of the same as savage. But then you say the crack is mighty when the crack is like off the chart. <laughs> but then the epitome of crack, like the, the, the kind of mecca of crack is um, the crack is 90. Which is really random. It's a random number, but Why we, I, always like to, I always like to think it refers to when Ireland, we qualified for the Soccer World Cup in 1990, Italia 90, and we got to like the quarterfinals. Oh my God. Did we beat Italy or Italy might have beat us? Not too sure. I was like <laughs> three years old, but I think the crack is 90 refers back to that. Okay, because I was going to say, why isn't the crack 100 or like 100 and... I don't know. 90 is a more fun number, I guess. I think crack. it has to deal with... That's actually, I was just in South Africa, and in South Africa, they say, if something's class, they say, oh, hundreds. So, oh, yeah. and in England, they always say 100%. I'm just like, all yeah, right, yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we, do, we just like, we like, we, we like setting the bar a little lower so we can have more fun earlier. <laughs> oh my God, I like it. All right, so the, the crack is 90 for this podcast. Did I use it right? Well, we haven't had the discussion yet. We have to see. <laughs> Well, it's coming. The crack is only 90. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, sweet. Well, okay, Patty, I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, we've shared many a run and chats, and I've always had some really good conversations with you. You're super down to earth. We, you're also obviously a super talented runner, hence the North Face. Um, 
But what I really wanted to share with the listeners and just everyone um, is how kind of your story and how you got into trail running, because I think it's pretty incredible. Um, so I guess just take it away. Like how, how did Patty O'Leary start running? Um, yeah. Because I know you are, you are um, you know, you're from Ireland and you grew up like on a dairy farm. Um, yeah. So yeah, but kind of yeah. tell us the story of how you started running. Yeah. So back in the day, actually, my dad was um, was heavily involved in running and like cross country running and, tr- and track running as a he was a, a local club. He he set up our local club. He did it as a kid. He was a gun starter. Yeah. All the kids, I'm the youngest. Of, I'm the, like at the, the start line. Um, I'm the youngest of five kids, and uh, we all did a little bit of cross country as kids, but we never really got into it much. I preferred like Gaelic football and hurling were the two sports. Did a yeah. bit of um show jumping as well in the pony club so i did a bit of horse riding as well and just worked on the farm and such and was always an active youth but um, i was much more obsessed with team sports mm-hmm. went to college and started playing lacrosse and lacrosse became my biggest sport we were actually we were the first team to start in ireland and something over it, the the sport was in ireland in the late 1800s but then it disappeared before or around the time of the first world war and then for the next 100 years, it was non-existent. And then in 2005, some Americans moved over to set up a club. And we were the first batch of Irish people to start playing there. Over the next eight years, I proceeded to just play, develop more lacrosse. And in over in the Europe, lacrosse isn't that common. It's, um, but there's so few teams across in many countries. You have to travel to get games. So we ended up from year one, from when it started in 2005, I just got to start traveling around Europe to play games. We do a weekend trip to Frankfurt and then hang out with this team in Frankfurt and play games all weekend and then just go for beers with them afterwards. Um, so yeah, lacrosse was kind of, it was really, I really got obsessed with it because of like such a, it was so, so great fun to go meet new people through it. I'd never traveled abroad before. I went mm-hmm. to college and started playing lacrosse. And then over the, la- over the next eight years, I started playing with the Irish team and went to travel to a couple of world championships, played in two world indoor lacrosse championships, two world outdoors and two Europeans. We actually got to the, we were like the, the Cinderella team of the 2012 European uh, championships. We ended up getting to the final. I was captain of the team that year. We had a kind of a Cinderella run to the final and then uh, lost to our, the old enemy England in the final. <laughs> then I got to like 2013. I was just finishing up um, my PhD in Dublin. And I was about to move to the US and a colleague of mine at work was like, Paddy, you like you're running all day on lacrosse. See, one thing about lacrosse in Ireland, we don't have any subs because we only have like 10 players in the country. So you only have one team. So as a midfielder, you're running up and down the field all day. Oh, yeah. So I felt I was doing an ultra marathon in the middle of a lacrosse game. Um, but then, yeah, I was about to move to the US, but then went January of 2013. One of the lads decided he was here. Paddy, come out and try this mountain run. I think it'd be great crack altogether. So, uh, yeah, we did a mountain race in Ireland, part of the Irish Mountain Running Association Winter League. And that spring, I did two or three mountain races. They were like 5Ks, 6Ks, 7Ks. But just, and I was doing them in road runners, and I was like, wearing my long lacrosse shorts. <laughs> and I was doing well, and actually like finishing near the front of these races. I'm like, wow, this is really fun altogether. Then I ended up moving to the US. I moved to the US for a postdoc here in San Francisco. I uh, continued to play lacrosse. I had my world championships. I was competing in the following year in 2014 in Denver. But when I got to San Francisco, I didn't know anyone. And I ended up finding my way into this running community, the November Project. It's this free fitness group that started in Boston back in 2011 that's grown since to like 50 cities across the world where volunteers lead people through um, free morning workouts. And I got involved in this group as a way to meet people, but then started running more and more and more yeah. through 2014, 2015. I was going out every week. I was still training for lacrosse, but I was using this workout group to get fit. And I was meeting all my friends in the city and kind of making my community in the city. Then come the, that summer, um, the girl who, found, who founded the San Francisco group of November Project, Laura uh, McGreen, Laura Green, mm. um, she moved to Ireland for the summer because her boyfriend, now husband, um, got an internship over there. So she said, Patty, would you look after the group when I'm away? So like <laughs> me, not a runner was put in charge of this group of like 50 plus people doing running workouts. I was like, oh, I better start. Maybe I should start running. So then that winter I did like my first like half marathon, trail half marathon and uh, did I uh, started taking running a little seriously. But then it came into January 2015. I was like, right, I think I'm going to step back from the cross. I'm going to try to give this running thing a go. And got involved and we went and jumped into two 30Ks here in the Bay Area. Uh, did well, won these races and set course records. And everyone's like, who's this long sh- lacrosse shorted 
Irish man doing really well in these races, but he doesn't really look like he's a clue what he's doing. And at that time, I was very fortunate as well. Matt Lay, who who um, he was a local trail runner, who at the time had won just had won the US hundred mile trail championships, and he was like kind of one of the senior characters in the Bay Area trail running community. He was here. Do you want some training advice? And I was here. Sure, why not? Yeah. So I started working with Matt uh, as my coach, and he's still my coach for or God, how many years? Okay, so we're getting old. Five years later, um, and then with Matt, I started pushing up the distances. So I did my first fifty k that year. Did my first marathon that year. Qualified for Boston. Did my first fifty k. Did my first fifty miler at the TNF fifty uh, in December twenty fifteen. And then from there, I realized I was just having so much fun with this. I realized this is, and I was doing quite well. And I realized this is my sport. And then did my first 100K the following year in 2016. And did the road late 2016 and started getting involved in with the North Face mm-hmm. from some of my previous successes. And also they were heavily involved with the November project then. So it was, I came on with the North Face kind of as a talented trail runner, but also somebody who was kind of, who was really core part of the November project fitness group that they were supporting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, met Hilary Allen, <laughs> met Dylan Bow, met all these great runners, um, uh, my new teammates, and then um, started traveling the world with them racing. And uh, yeah, now ultra running, mountain running is my sport. Oh, man. I love this story because, first of all, let's mention the long lacrosse short. Dylan Bowman is also a long lacrosse short man. Yeah. He is trying to make the North Face running kits with those long shorts and not the super short shorts, but the shorter than the women's shorts. So you're welcome. (laughs) But then also, I mean, I started running with team sports, too. Like, I was a tennis player in college. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because... um, I mean, you're also a scientist. I mean, you're, you, you are at a postdoc and say, well, not anymore. You already have your postdoc. Research specialist. Research specialist. Congratulations. You're off the, 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 off I, the, the tenure track. Thank you. I don't even know. I mean, I, I got off that track a long time ago, but yeah. I started running in graduate school as well. It was kind of like the stress and I just needed something, something else that was separate from school and work that I could just do. And what drew me to trail running was that I had a, a like a different community there as well. And I think it's really funny because I think everyone thinks of running as a solo sport. Um, But part of the reason why I love trail running is the community. And um, I think, I mean, I'm a coach and I think the the benefit of having a coach is like the community that it provides you, even if it's just one-on-one. But I think you can become a stronger runner if you like share it with other people. And how has that influenced you, like your ability to, get excited about trail running but then also just like training in general and staying excited and staying motivated to do these races when you read like say like when you read when i started reading articles on trail running and running and in distance running in the say endurance and trail running when i started into running first everyone was like trail running it seems like a very solitary sport and it's funny you read a lot of news articles and that's what they say yeah and it's only when you actually get involved in the sport you realize that it's so team driven community driven you told a start line a utmb i told the start line this year i look to my left and look to my right and there's friends from all over the world who you're racing against yeah. but you're somewhat racing against each other but ultimately you're all racing against the course and you're racing against the start to finish line that's in front of you and you actually work together on that so like even in the races it's so community driven like i was just down in ultra trail k town and at 60k in i had a stomach issue and i was dry heaving side of the trail luca Italian runner I was racing against stops beside me said Paddy get this water into you come on we're getting you out of this and he got me out of a hole and we ran together for the next 20k before it hit me again and he proceeded to, to, <laughs> to run quite well but it's examples like that of like people everyone wants to see everyone succeed everyone wants to see your friends and the people your, your peers succeed because we all want to see this sport move forward yeah but then also like you'd asked about how did I kind of how does the community drive me I'm very fortunate like initially I thought I would say, wow, the Bay Area is so unique that we have this great trail running community. Every Saturday we have 10, 20, 40, 50 people come out for a group run out of San Francisco running company. We run around Marin, everything from leads to people walking the whole route, the yeah. whole rain. Um, now as I've started to travel, I realize that there's pockets like this all over the US and all over the world. And it's something as I've started to travel to more and more cities and countries, I realize that, wow, just it's kind of endemic across the sport that there's amazing communities everywhere and that's kind of what drives the sport forward yeah and do you think that like um i mean it's something that's influenced me is and for for me i think community looks different to 
to every person. For me, I'm more, I mean, I'm very outgoing and I like to talk obviously, but I'm also an introvert. And to me, like, even if I show up for like a, a 40 to 50, you know, person group run, I still have my, like my community, like my little group of friends that like, I'll have like two or three people that I like run with religiously. And for me, like that's a big enough community that, you know, I can show up either to a workout or just a long run and run with those people. And that community just brings so much life into a single run or my training as a whole. Um, and I think that that's, what's so cool about trail running. And I think the more people can kind of find a community or include themselves in one, even if it's just one or two people, it can actually positively influence them. Um, and I actually, it's so funny. I think one of the first times I met you was at, um, was in San Francisco. I was out there for the North Face 50, like not racing, but I did a November project workout. And I remember you were there and um, like, oh my God, I had so much fun. Like, because we travel around to like even different cities in the United States. And like, I, like you were raving about, it and I was like, what is this? And then like, I traveled to Boston, I traveled to LA and I traveled to San Francisco and I started like looking up November project workouts. And it was like, maybe not so much running, like I'm used to, but like, there was like this, like hundreds of people would show up. And it was just like, we were at this random park and the early morning at 6 a.m. And in, in, in San Francisco somewhere, and, you know, Bernal Heights, is that a place? I think we were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, then, you know, we did this amazing workout that had like burpees and like team sprint things. And like, I was, I was wrecked. And then like, we just had, you know, we went to coffee afterwards and it was like, you were just invigorated for the day. Yeah. I think like back to a couple of things you said there that examples of communities like the November Project really bring to the fore. And um, when it terms to kind of improving your training and also just improving your stock, one thing that groups like November Project and just ha finding your group, finding your people brings to you is accountability. Because you tell someone, okay, I'm going to be at the trailhead Saturday at 7 a.m. And you told, if you were planning to go on your own, you might sleep in. But the fact you told someone you're going to meet them there, you found your community, you found your people that you that you're committing to, you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. Then also just the infectious stoke that a group brings uh, brings you throughout the day. You were saying after that day you were just invigorated from the day, yeah. and that's what that's one thing that I'd say has helped kind of the November project get to the scale. It's grown to like over fifty cities now around the world. Is that like it's always early morning workouts and it's always during the week before work, but people go into work and they're just smile is ear to ear. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably napping by mid afternoon because they're so. <laughs> The so there's probably a lot of work hours last time, no? but there's still just been through the roof. <laughs> but wait, is that a phrase you could use? The crack is the crack is ninety. The crack is ninety at many workouts, yeah. <laughs> or the epitome of crack at November Project. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's just I think it's so cool because you can just I'm such an early morning person. Like I love if I'm in a city or on the trails. Like I love waking up with like just just the world. Like watching a city wake up, just sharing sharing some miles with a friend or. This, it just, you know, even a bike ride, anything, it's just like finding that community and getting yourself out the door just makes such a difference. And I think it can, it's like a snowball effect. I think it, it's positive momentum and it can kind of like take you to new places. Like how I started running is I got involved with this, like this like old lady running group, literally. They were like a group of like 55 to 60 year old women who were like Olympic trial qualifiers uh, for the marathon back in the eighties. And they were still killing it. Like, ev like three days a week, they'd get up religiously at five 30. And I was like some 25 year old girl who like was running with them and like, tell me about running. Tell me about trails. Like, what is this thing? Like one of them was this woman, Janie Day, who was like, she had the record on Pikes Peak Ascent before Kim Dobson. Like that's some random woman I met who I'd never would have if I wasn't up at five 30 in the morning. Like, running yeah. circles around this park like in the dark you know <laughs> so community is what you make it and the cool thing that um yeah I also wanted to talk to you about was like because I think trail running like you said there's there's just these little micro communities but everywhere around the world like you can find something in common with anyone and you can share that through running even if you don't speak the same language and um yeah you kind of you've had some great success in trail races, but this year, um, tell me about what did you do this year that was kind of different? Because yeah, I guess you'll, you'll tell me, but about like your job and everything, but yeah, what did you do this year that was like, so, so cool. Yeah. So I decided, so for a year, for years, I've been like for the last two or three years, I've been traveling to races across the world, but because of, of I have to get back for work, 
I would only, for example, like last January, I flew to Hong Kong, mm. left San Francisco Tuesday night, landed, landed late Wednesday night, had like two days of getting ready for the race, raced all day Saturday, and then flew home Monday morning to work Monday morning. I'm like, wow, I just traveled to a new continent, to a city. I found there's amazing trail running community there, but I'm only there for like four nights and I'm racing across two, like um, between two of them. Yeah. And so I didn't actually get to experience that properly. So I had the opportunity to work. Wouldn't you be kind of tired too? <laughs> like... <laughs> that too. <laughs> that whole like traveling across the Pacific Ocean, yeah, it kind of wrecked me a little bit as well <laughs> for the race and for work on Monday morning, which I <laughs> proceeded to not make. Um, what did you do this weekend, Patty? <laughs> Oh, man. But one thing I decided is that, wow, I'm traveling to these places, but I'm not actually getting to meet the people along the way. I'm not actually getting to see and experience a city or an area. Mm-hmm. So I decided to take three months. I took 12 weeks leave from work and planned this little tour, uh, work tour in a sense, um, where we travel to race, to train, but mainly to meet people along the way. And yeah, in, I went down with you in early October. We went to Santiago, Chile for North Face Endurance Challenge there. Yeah. Met up with Person Cordovan and, and Moises Jimenez. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did the uh, we did the endurance challenge in Santiago. Had great crack for a week there, and then <laughs> Moses brought us down to his hometown of Cayeque, which is down in the heart of ice in Patagonia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a week of adventuring down there. But one of the highlights of that is we went down to a little town called Cochrane, mm-hmm. and Moses had organised a group run with all of the kids of the area from the school, and we went and led, or maybe they led us because they're much faster at times, <laughs> and this group of like eight-year-old to 16-year-old local kids who on this beautiful 10k loop through a uh, park national, uh, national patagonia mm-hmm. and you have spanish i didn't have any spanish and they're chatting to these little uh little kids who didn't have very much english but just the kind of cr- regards of language it's just their ability just to have banter and fun and just yeah. in the shared invisible shared love of the trail with these kids was kind of one of the most special moments of that trip that was a really cool experience that was so cool to see you too, because like these little kids would run up to me and they'd be like, how do you say this? Cause they like really wanted to talk to you and they could yeah. just like, like your excitement for the trail was like contagious, like through the language barrier and through, through anything. Yeah. And also, so you were done. So this also is just kind of cool too, with your, like the time and the community aspect of just kind of giving back to trails and like yeah. these, these kids kind of didn't really know about, about trail running. It was their backyard mountains, but like they had gone there to hike with their families, but they didn't know about running. And Mm -hmm. like through community, we were able to share that. And you were down. So the reason that you went down to, to like to Patagonia was you were actually training for the world championship of trail running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were competing for Ireland, correct? Yeah. Yes. So in the middle of uh, November, I was, I was training up to um, the world long distance trail championships, the Irish team where we'd have people from like 50 or 60 different countries come to Patagonia to meet, which is always an absolute stellar event. Yeah. But um, in the, actually in the train, so the next two weeks after we left you guys in Koyeke, I took two weeks of traveling solo. And this is kind of a point I think is very important for people as they start traveling for trail races or as they try to find their community, mm-hmm. is that along the way, even though I had no Spanish whatsoever, <laughs> I started making, I started meeting people along the way that would tell me about future races and then going to these races. And I think just overcoming a fear of just asking people for, advice before you go to a place asking local people for advice and going joining random trail running groups that you don't know about over that next two weeks i went to two races that um of i knew one person maybe at both of them and just jumped into this community of people of many of them wouldn't have had english and i had no spanish whatsoever apart from like 10 five curse words and <laughs> um, i just jumped like people are really one thing i found this trip regardless of where you're from regardless of what language you speak people across the trail running community are so welcoming because they just want to see people jump in, do their sport and critically enjoy their local mountains because we all feel our local mountains are the best in the world. Like the mountains <laughs> back in Ireland are absolutely class. And, yeah, uh, I mean, mountains in Colorado are pretty yeah. spectacular, Patty. And I'm here in France and, you know, they're great, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah, I went to the World Championships and met up with all my Irish buddies from, uh, who flew down from Ireland. And yeah, we had a great two weeks of um, of training leading up to the race and then the race itself. Mm-hmm. And that was just, a, the World Championships are such a special event because you have everyone walking around. Like you, you can then find everyone where they're from because they have all of our eccentric uh, tracksuit mm-hmm. pants and bottom, or bottom and top. And um, you just get to meet people from all over the world. And like there was people from Nepal to Ireland, from USA to, uh, to New Zealand. 
um, you know, people from every nation there, and it's that's one of the coolest events I've attended. This the World Championships every year. Yeah. On that, I went across to Cape Town for the Cape Town 100K, yeah. and I was so impressed by the trail running community there. I landed on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, Ultra Trail Cape Town was on Saturday, mm-hmm. and one of the guys who was hosting us, Lance, was like. Paddy, you got to come to Tuesday Trails. Tuesday Trails are the best day of the week. <laughs> I walk up to this parking lot on the side of Table Mountain. There's 300 people there for an hour-long trail run with beers okay. afterwards on the side of Table Mountain in Cape Town. And there was a big crowd there because it was the race week. But said, yeah, every week they get 150 people come out to that. And regardless of your fitness level, they just want to bring people into the trails and show them, get people in Cape Town to realize that, see this mountain above you. We can go out and run to that and we can enjoy that. So it's a, it was just a kind of a great kind of entry level trail running group. And then it just built, it's like what we have in San Francisco running company, people of every distance from elites down to beginners come and ready to enjoy these trails together as a group. It's really a really awesome experience. Then I continued on the travels and went back to Ireland after Cape Town, I went back to Ireland and um, yeah. So earlier this year, we made a, myself and my two friends, Ryan and Dylan from Deuster Film, we made a film on the Irish trail running community. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we called Coming Home, like Chalk Diwalia. And yeah, we launched that in Ireland uh, the two weeks I was back. So we did a little, myself and Dylan flew over, we did a little tour of Dublin, Cork and, uh, and Newcastle, it's up near Belfast. We did a little tour and showed their film to a couple of hundred people. Yeah. So, I mean, I want to actually ask you about that film in a second. But um, yeah, I mean, some of the things that I just love so much about what you said is just anywhere you are, it's, it's just kind of about this fear. It's like, it doesn't matter... I mean, it doesn't matter how you get to like the like a local trail run if you have 300 people that doesn't mean that everyone is like this elite trail runner like you can have people hiking you can have people you know running super fast or doing intervals but you're all out there together sharing something it doesn't even really matter the pace it's just kind of like just the fact that everyone's out there just meeting together like you're there at the start you're there at the end then you can be like you know get breakfast or coffee afterwards it's just, but it's just like this really cool thing that you can share like everyone's individual experience is different but the fact that you're all there together you know at that moment I think is really empowering um yeah and you can have that anywhere I think like that's yeah I think that's the best part about trails um but then also it's really cool like you've qualified for the world the world championships of trail running for the past two years uh, it's my second year, yeah. Did yeah. the World Ultra last year and the World yeah. Long Distance Trail this year. Short. Long yeah. Distance is actually shorter. <laughs> I know, right? Long Distance is like the marathon, yeah. Sure, and then yeah. the one before that was like a Pinicolosa. It was like an 80 yeah, like 90K, I think. And yeah, 90K. It was brutal. But like, I mean, that's a really cool way that like it's 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 this whole like these teams that you come together. It's so cool. I've competed in and I've, I've qualified for a couple of years and I've done one um the mountain running championships one year when it was in um, Miu and in, in France. And it was so cool. You could wear like the team USA and like you do, you feel like it's an individual race, but you're like trying to work together as a team. It's like, it's super empowering. Um, but yeah, so this film, I actually got to see it. Um, so this is when you were over in uh, the summer in, uh, in 2019 for UTMB, you did like a little private showing of your film called coming home. Um, because I always think this is awesome. Like you started trail running, like obviously you were an athlete when you were, when you were at home, you know, in Ireland, when you were growing up in that little dairy farm, maybe like with team sports, but like, then it's cool. Like you go away, you find this new, almost this new part of yourself and then you come back. So, and what did you do in this film? That was so cool. Yeah. So um, this film had been a plan for a couple of years myself and um, my buddy Ryan Skura, Metro November Project here in San Francisco, is a filmmaker with his friend Dylan Lads. Yeah. Ryan came back from a wedding in Ireland and was like, dude, I went for a couple of hikes in the Irish mountains. We got to go back. We, we need some excuse to go back to Ireland to, uh, to make a film or do something. Mainly, I just, he just wanted to go back and run in the mountains. <laughs> and at that time, I had started to get involved in the Irish team and I was starting to meet Irish people. And I started to realize, wow. Ireland has this spectacular trail running community that I touched off just before I left, but then I moved to the US, but I'd never really realized how deep it was and how strong it was and how great it is. Um, So yeah, we wanted to find a way to go back and discover more and tell more people about the amazing trail running community in Ireland and amazing mountains in Ireland. So as a platform to that, I I flew back and I was going to attempt the fastest known time at this route called the Wicklow Round, which is a route around 26 mountains in 
in the Wicklow mountain range, which is south of Dublin. And it's about 120 kilometers, connects all 26 peaks, fastest route between each peak. You can take whatever route you want. Um, but the weird thing about that, with this, is you have to use a compass and map for it. They didn't right. want it to be pure, the found, one of the co-founders, Joel yeah. Lollard, didn't want it to be, to be a pure endurance effort. He wanted it to be a mountain effort. So you had to find your way around the mountains using a compass and map and no GPS. <laughs> so yeah, went for this record on a terrible, windy and foggy and wet day, which is, or no wet, actually, windy and foggy day in April and I uh, had a visibility of about 50 feet and was using the compass and map and found my way around and then I've beaten the record by 45 minutes I bet I took it back to Ireland Joe McConaughey Joe Streamley <laughs> McConaughey had it before me so I took it back yeah and then um eight days later another local Irish lad took three minutes off my 16 hour and 27 minute record uh it was four minutes um <laughs> Yeah, so we were using that trip back as me to attempt the round, but we were using my attempt at the round for a way of us to chronicle and to film and to meet and to learn more about the Irish mountain running community. So then we made a film mm -hmm. about the Irish mountain running community and about the Wicklow round, about the history of the round. And then lucky enough, because we were still there when my record was taken. And since then, the record was taken by our good friend Gavin Byrne. Um, about a month later. And Gavin was actually heavily involved in, uh, in crewing me. Because that's a great thing. Like, we had both said earlier in the year, we were both going to go for this record. And I said, right, I have to do it in April because I'm back there then. He said, cool, I'll help you out as much as I can. And on his birthday, him and like seven or eight other people from the Irish Mountain Running community came in to just follow me or crew me or help with the filming. And because they, they all just wanted to see someone attempt the round and um, to support people doing it. And then, yeah, so we made a, we made a great film, which we think really highlights the, uh, the strength of the community there. And that trip back to Ireland that we just did in December was really special to getting Irish eyes seeing the movie first and just seeing their reactions to it. And the opening night, we held a panel with Gavin, who currently holds the record, with Mara O'Sullivan, who was the, she was the first person to complete the round. Joel Lawler, one of the co-founders and myself, and we had a really insightful panel to try give people advice about when they want to tackle it themselves. Yeah. And uh, it was a really cool kind of community driven event. And like over the last couple of years, I've been trying to, even though I'm living in the US and maybe here for the foreseeable future, um, I really want to be a part of the Irish mountain running community. And they really welcomed me in and allowed me to be part of it and allowed me to contribute as much as I can, which is, which is really cool, even from afar. It's really cool to be a part of that community at home. Yeah. Oh, man. And I can say, like, I, I saw that. I saw that movie and it just seeing that, like seeing the community and, and, and seeing your story and how you were able to capture the, the community around trail running in a place that, you know, you were just discovering yourself, um, even though you grew up there. It, it's, just, it's such a cool film. So it's called Coming Home. Um, I encourage like everyone listening to, to check it out because it's, it's such a cool film. Um, no, yeah. It's not online yet as of January 2020, but we're currently, we're, we're doing the Trails in Motion film tour, which travels to like 20 countries. So wherever you are, if the Trails in Motion film tour comes through, have a look at it. It'll have our film plus three other great films. All right. Well, it's, it's definitely, it's going to be out soon. Probably. Yeah. By the time, by the, by the time this is live, but, um, <laughs> and plus like, man, I want to get out there and do the Wicklow round. Like, these I know. I, are... I told a lot of people that you were going to. So <laughs> oh, you... no. All right, cool. Then, uh, let's get my compass and map. Your compass out. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's cool. No, I know. I, I, uh, the visibility that you had is, um, was shit. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I think you can learn from the best. <laughs> and if, if you learn, you can learn in like a park in San Francisco. So, you know, like I, I can do it too. But yeah, like uh, actually, I think this I think is, a, it brings up a good point. I think that a lot of us get, especially over in the US where all of our trails are immaculately marked and whatnot, that we kind of lose our, like we, we experience trail running, but to get on the mountains first, actually being self-sufficient out there is a really important thing. And I think the process of learning how to use a compass and map was really an, an, an empowering and an enlightening mo moment for me is in my development as a mountain athlete. And I couldn't re recommend it more for people just to take out their maps and a compass and get out there and do an REI course or do any sort of course and jump into an orienteering race. That is such, some of the most fun they've had. I did this, we have a Navex series, which is of longer two, four hour orienteering races, which I jumped into a few last spring. I'm definitely going to do in the future, but it's really empowering and enlightening kind of moment in your development as mountain athlete, but it's also very important to have those skills because if you're out in the mountains, having a phone yeah. is great and having the maps downloaded, but being able to find, to use bearings to find your way around, it's a very useful skill, but and it's so much fun. I'd recommend people try it. <laughs> All right. Nice. Um, cool. Well, 
This is awesome. I, so I wanted to end the podcast with a few questions uh, for you. Um, and how about we start with this one first? So, okay. So you are, you know, well, you, you have your postdoc now, you have your PhD, you're a very qualified and, and smart person, but that also means you're working a lot. So mm -hmm. how, I mean, this year was special. You took some time off of work to kind of like, you know, to, to travel, explore the community with trail running. Um, but that's not your everyday life. How do you balance a full-time job with training yeah. or something that actually requires a lot of time, like the endurance sport, like ultra running? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think plan like just a little bit of forward planning can go a long ways to helping yourself train better with a full-time job, like planning, having, I don't, I, I don't have access to showers where I work. So like it, uh, having a wet wipe <laughs> someone that can help. Um, no, yeah. but I mean by like planning, having like a spare change of clothes and having like to include running commute, run commuting as part of your training. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. during the week, I get a lot of my mileage with, uh, with run commuting. Yeah. But also one of the things, I don't know, I'm not a qualified coach, but I think the a lot of the most important training is the back-to-backs and weekends for these longer things. So mm -hmm. I end up doing like 60 plus percent, maybe 60% of my mileage is over a Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. But then during the week, I think just planning planning to have extra like a bit of forward planning at the start of the week to have spare change of clothes and work them on that can help a huge amount just to do because if you're when i bike into work it takes me 20 minutes if i bus into work it takes me 45 minutes mm. i can do this i can use that 45 minutes to do actually to run even further to get home because running is faster than public transport in a lot of cities yep and also recognizing like going out and getting to know your city if you join a group like the november project they they'll like tour around the city and you can find like the best little hills or stairs in the yeah. city that are great for training so i do a lot of my training here we must say that in san francisco we're very fortunate to have a lot of hills that's one thing we have a lot of so it's good it's good city for a mountain runner but yeah and also so like find, knowing your city better so you can find suitable little places where you can tailor in your training if you need to get hills or whatnot or parking lots or, or parking garages with stairs or whatnot, whatever um but also finding a group like every many cities will have these different running groups whether it's a flat maybe it's a it's a, a flat like track and field group or it's just a, a fun run in the evening or a midnight runners or something like that finding a group in the city that mm -hmm. like because at times you get back from a long day's work you're back at six o'clock and you're like ah, oh, i don't <laughs> want to go to run now i just want to sit and watch netflix or want to cook dinner yep. and want to chat to my housemates whatever having a group that are going to meet that you know they're going to be there i'm going to go out and join them mm -hmm. or having an early morning group that's going to get you up at about to join so that's actually one of the most important things i i feel that helped me develop as a trail runner who has a full-time job working mm -hmm. in a city is i found a group that we're going to be out there and i know they're going to be out there and that's going to draw me out to join them and get me up in the morning or encourage me to go run afterwards in the evening yeah so that's one of the most important things find find a group there yeah i love that and you or also start one or start one exactly you know, you have one yeah. Put it out there. This November project group started when two fellas, Brogan and Boyne, they had done, they were fed up with paying for gyms and things like that. So they're like, all right, for the month of November, we're going to work out together, keep each other accountable. We're going to do an outdoor workout every day for a month. They got to the end of the month, they're like, wow, this is fun. Let's keep this going. Every Wednesday, we'll meet at the stadium, Harvard Stadium. And they blasted out on Twitter and said, come join us. Hmm. Brief, 6 30 a.m. And the following week, one person showed up and they're like, we were, we're kings of the world we created a running community but they quit it and over the weeks months years it grew the boston group grew from 10 to 50 to 100 to a thousand people coming to their workouts just from word of mouth and just they created a platform for that for people to have an, a group that kept them accountable to work out yeah so yeah finding that group or starting one i like that well you answered my second question which was you know how to best train for running trails when you live in a city and you always have told me like in san francisco you're like you can run like these trails in the middle of a city like you just have to go and explore and you kind of have to like change maybe your perspective on what you think trails are like you said like running upstairs or something like this finding the dirt path like you know i can I mean, like my go-to my go-to mid midweek one of my go-to midweek kind of longer runs i'd like a a 12 or 13 mile route commute run from home into work that it's like 13 miles I can pack in like 3,000 feet of climbing and that you have to be inventive with that you have to find the steepest streets and you may have to like take a lot of sharp turns and like find your way through through different streets and whatnot um but with a bit of planning go on to Strava and look at maps go on to google maps go on to Gaia 
uh, look through the best routes and you'll find this little route that's your go-to thing and you can get a lot of, it may not be 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 foot climbs that you find in the Alps, <laughs> but you can get, you can get, if you ever find a smaller climb, you can have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And it's an exercise in monotony, which is useful for small <laughs> training as well. It's true. It's mental training. Yeah. <laughs> and the last question I want to ask you, um, why personally do you think it's important to have a community for running? Um, I think in a day and age where most of our time can be spent in our phones or looking at TV, I'm on a I, I at times it seems like we're losing the ability to interact one-to-one -one with people yeah. and I think having a community of like using exercise as a way to draw you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people to have one-on-one -on -one presence with people to actually be present with people there I think having a community for running really helps that because I think it's a great platform to bring people together <clears throat> so I think that's uh, I think that's one of the most important things oh I love it you're right and I think it just, it's like just that small amount of interaction, whether it's like you're a social butterfly and you want to talk with everyone at this group run or just one person, I think it can make a huge positive influence on, on your running or just like your daily life. So, yeah. I think there was, there was actually one other point that I should have said earlier. One thing about finding, like when you find yourself a trail running community, especially if you're an up and coming developing runner, there's so, when you find yourself into a trail running community, into a running community, there's so much knowledge in that and not being afraid to ask questions. Yeah. As we said earlier, everyone wants to see everyone succeed. Everyone wants to see people either trying new distance or getting faster, going up a new mountain, aiming, targeting, running up a mountain they weren't able to do before to achieve something that they want to achieve. Everyone wants to see that. And people are always going to be willing to give advice and to help out and show you the ropes and things like that. So just asking, Johnny community and asking for advice, people are always willing to give it is a very yeah. important thing. I love it. Well, thanks so much, Patty. It was such a good conversation. Thanks for the chat. Yeah. Off the work now with me. Well, actually, no, I'll finish my toast first. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good rest of your day. And yeah, you thanks so much for chatting with me. Yeah, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay.